time now, though, for the markets with Layton, and you say the next round of crop reports is right around the corner. It certainly is. Tuesday the 10th, we'll have the monthly updates from the USDA. In the meantime, we are following these stories in the markets this week. U.S. beef supplies continue to tighten. U.S. soybean exports are likely to remain strong. And winter weather will likely drive wheat prices over the next few months. At the market close Wednesday, cattle futures ended the day higher, with June the strongest. January feeder cattle ended the day 20 cents higher. Now, most analysts are confident it may take up to two years to increase beef supplies. How this will impact the overall market is a source of much discussion. Trader Virgil Robinson had these comments about the situation. I don't sense any significant increase in beef supply until at least 2016. The issue has really been, can we sustain higher retail price um, export trade given the numbers and the increase in value of that product? And my answer simply would be yes, I think we can. Do I expect a straight up ascent in the market? No. But over the course of the next many months, I think beef prices will continue to irregularly move higher. The National Pork Board on December 1st launched a three-week social media campaign targeting Hispanic consumers. The campaign is promoting pork-based meals to Spanish-speaking consumers. The program is centered on the Pork Board's Spanish language Facebook page. Visitors to the page have a chance to win a gift card to buy pork products. First, though, they have to leave comments about the pork recipes that are featured each day on that Facebook page. Our trivia quiz this week concerns pickup trucks. Let's take a look at that quiz question. What state has the highest number of new pickup truck sales? Is it California or Mississippi or Texas or Oklahoma? I'll tell you at the end of the markets. It's no secret that exports have been driving the soybean market these recent days. The question on most traders' minds is, will this continue? Analyst Alan Brugler offered his opinion recently on Market to Market. It probably doesn't have a real long leash to it, uh, but again, we know the, the mechanism. We've, we've already got export commitments for 90% of the USDA forecast for the year, and we've still got eight months left in the year. So uh, the market needs to slow down the export demand. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, we basically only have about a 50 million bushel uh, room in the carryover, all right? The USDA is 170, 120 is pipeline or minimum supply. So. Uh, we can't allow for a whole lot more export growth here. Uh, what we do know is China's got over 13 million metric tons of purchases from the U.S. that they haven't shipped yet. Uh, and the bulk of those are going to go out before March or potentially April. So it looks like we'll continue to see very strong exports. More acres of wheat may be planted in the state of Mississippi in 2014. Extension Ag economist Brian Williams discussed the outlook for this grain market when he met with me on Wednesday. Brian, we'll soon have another set of crop reports, but what did that November report say about wheat? We will in about a week or so. Uh, the November report, there wasn't really too big a surprise or market mover in the wheat market. Uh, they increased the production by about 16 million bushels, but the demand also increased. So the ending stocks were about 4 million bushels higher, but no big surprises. I guess it'd be safe to say wheat has kind of been declining in price for quite a while. It has. It's, it's kind of been a roller coaster ride. Uh, we saw it declining for most of the summer. Uh, it kind of hit a low point in September before it came back up again. Uh, and then we've, we've actually been on a little bit of an increase uh, since about mid-November. Now some analysis I've read in the last week indicates that, that this creep higher as they described it might continue. Would you agree with that? Or? I do. I think so. Uh, the big thing is, is demand for wheat has been strong. Uh, there's also some concerns with weather. Uh, in the Midwest they're expecting single digits, possibly even below zero temperatures and, and there's some concerns that that could potentially hurt the wheat crop. So uh, a harsh winter, uh, especially in the Midwest, uh, coming out in the next few months, that could uh, maybe generate a little more interest in wheat or uh, pep those prices up a little more. Definitely, definitely. The Farmer's Almanac is, is predicting a harsh winter, and I've seen some meteorologists also predicting the same. So it could be interesting on how that impacts the wheat crop. 
So even looking to February and March, it really depends uh, a good bit on the weather situation as to what kind of prices we may have for wheat. It does, and, and that's the, the big thing that we'll be watching is, is how our wheat crop uh, comes out with that. If we get some snow cover, uh, those cold temperatures aren't going to be as bad and, uh, or aren't going to be as impactful in some of these areas uh, as, as they would be if the, the ground was bare. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, kind of bring it back to Mississippi a little bit here. What about 2014 Mississippi acres? Any thoughts or feelings as to what that might be looking like? Well, looking at Mississippi acres in last year, or this year, I guess we would say, we'd had about 400,000 acres uh, here. Uh, we're expecting probably a little bit of an increase next year, um, both with driven partially by the, uh, the wheat prices, but also by soybeans. We're expecting a larger soybean crop next year. Uh, here in the state and wheat is typically followed up, or soybeans are usually followed up by, by wheat. Before our feature story, let's check the trivia answer for you for this week. The correct choice is C, Texas is the largest market for new pickup truck sales in the United States. <laughs> 